wanted to start here. It was a couple. It was at least a year or so ago. I remember uh, it was during the House Floor session. You were participating online that day, or checking in online, and I remember you checked in from what you called God's country. <laughs> so tell us about where you call home and, and why you describe it that way. Over the years, people have asked. You know, we've been asked in committee to describe where we live, and the first thing that that always comes to mind to me is that I live where everybody else wants to come on vacation. It, it's beautiful country. It, it's a mixture of, of farmland, uh, forest, the rolling hills, the swamp, all of it. Lakes, plenty of lakes. It, it is just beautiful country, you know. And it's a variety of uh, things going on there from, from uh, construction to, uh, uh, oh shoot, pipeline and farming and uh, small businesses. And there is some industry there as well. And it's, it is just a beautiful area. And the people are just, are, are wonderful people. And that's District 2A. That's District 2A. Tell me what uh, is important, the issues that your constituents, are, what's important to them? You know, the, is, the issues that are important to them, uh, it, a lot of it is uh, work. You know, let us go to work. Let us uh, make sure that we can provide for our families. Stop, uh, stop letting government get in the way of, 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 of people making a living out there. You know, and, that's, uh, and that's all the way from, from resorts all, right on through to uh, construction, farming, all of it. You know, for me, as, uh, as someone who uh, I really don't have a political background, I have a, uh, a military and work, uh, truck driving, and uh, law enforcement background. And I'm not a politician, and I want to stay out of the way of people making a living. I'll be there to help them, to serve them, and that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I did as a, as a deputy sheriff. That's what I'm going to do as a legislator. I'm going to be there to serve them. And I was curious to get your opinion on this. Governor Walls talks a lot about One Minnesota. And the way of life in District 2A has to be a lot different than some of the folks that are getting on in urban parts of the state. Do you think that we're achieving that one Minnesota or at least going in the right direction? You know, I'm going to be honest. Uh, what, what I've seen as far as his description of one Minnesota, it, it's one Minnesota how he wants it. And it's, uh, it, it is uh, a very big clash with how we live in rural Minnesota. And I mean, I want to have, I want to have a, uh, a state where we work together. I want to have a, a, a people where we can work uh, with the people from the metro area, work alongside with the people from the rural areas. You can't paint it all with the same brush. You can't have, a, uh, have things that are uh, a blanket, uh, one, one thing covers all. We're very different areas, and you have different needs. And, you know, we both need each other because you can't have a thriving metro area without a thriving rural area and vice versa. So, you know, <laughs> it, it's not going the right direction as far as what I, you know, what I would say would be a one Minnesota. And you serve on both the Judiciary and Public Safety Committees? Yes. And provide a more of an insider type of view because your, uh, your career was spent in law enforcement. Um, fair or not, right now law enforcement, under the microscope, um, much of the positive or negative division seeming to come along or fall along party lines or, or even racial lines. Are there things both sides of the aisle could support that would make policing, quote, better for everyone? The police officers in the state of Minnesota are some of the best trained officers in the nation. The nation comes here to find law enforcement officers. And the issues that have been going on, um, I look at it through, through a different scope. When, when I'm talking about uh, the, the spike in violent crime, it's not the officers. The, the spike in violent crime is, is the hearts and minds of the citizenry that need to have a, have a change. The officers need to be able to do their jobs to be able to protect the communities. 
And over my years and experience in law enforcement, if we have a bad officer, they are taken care of, they are weeded out. And if there's disciplinary action to be, to be done, it's done. And there's all the tools to hold them accountable as long as the administration is willing to exercise those, use those tools. So, you know, I don't, you know, I, I, I've worked alongside uh, many, many uh, different races as far as, our, as, as far as the law enforcement field goes. And it is not a race issue as far as I'm concerned or as far as the majority of the people that I have spoken to of, of all races. It is a heart and mind change that has to come about overall in the citizenry to where we get back on track and start uh, living as we should and, and taking care of each other. And when we reach the end of the 2022 legislative session, what will it take for you to call it successful? You know, <laughs> to call it successful, to make sure that we, we, we have done everything to, to serve the people of Minnesota to the best of our abilities, to be good stewards of the resources they have given us through their tax dollars, the resources that they have given to be used to help them. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to see waste spending. You know, I was talking uh, with some groups earlier today as far as uh, the bonding. We have responsibilities as a state to take care of infrastructure, to take care of uh, the resources that we, we have as assets, to make sure that we keep roads and, and, and bridges up, and to make sure that public is safe. Those are the state's responsibilities. And, you know, if we're falling down on those, falling behind on those, and using and, and not being good stewards of the resources the citizens have given us, then shame on us for not doing our jobs. And just finally, I, I kind of prepped you for this question before the interview. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble, but if I'm driving through Clearbrook and I'm on my way up north, I have a car full of kids that are hungry. Am I stopping at K&K's Cafe or Daru's Pizza or both? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be there for the day, or depending on the time of day, because uh, like I said, like I said before, K and K is open uh, uh, for breakfast and lunch, and Drew's is open for supper time. Uh, you can't go wrong with either place. Both of them, both of them have uh, very wonderful owners and uh, service, and the portion that you that you uh, get on your plate or. Or, or yeah, the portion that you get on your plate, or the pizza that that you that you uh, order. If you go away hungry, that's your own fault. <laughs>